Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? How are you doing? How you living? This is Big Corpse, and I am your host of The Smoking Section. So check it out. Um, we are starting to go live nowadays with our podcasts. <laughs> so if you want to see the videos, um, check us out on Facebook, um, at Corpse Collection. Same thing for YouTube. That's where we'll be streaming and saving our videos. Um, you know, bear with me. Yeah, this is the first few times that I'm really getting in front of the camera and putting myself on screen. Uh, kind of a little, uh, what's that called? A uh, self-esteem issue thing there, you know, insecurity thing there. But it's cool. We'll work it out. Yeah. Um, this episode, uh, is a very interesting one because this young man has impressed me with his growth. Um, I've watched him scrape the lowest of lows and, you know, essentially pull, uh, pull himself up, you know, that whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps, um, type of idea really applies to this young man. Um, he's really impressive. He's very insightful and very thoughtful with the things that he shares and the things that he likes to post and a lot of the words that he chooses to use, um, yeah, it was just an amazing honor to have him on the show because I've watched this guy grow up. Um, if you guys can, please help me welcome the wonderful, powerful, and intelligent Nick Brantley. All right, everybody, we are live. What's up, my brother? So this is Nick Brantley. This is a very good, longtime friend. Um, very smart, very inspirational. You guys can find him on the Twitter. Right, dropping his. Uh, I call him. I call him the young Tony Robbins. Uh, yeah, this is the smoking section, man. If anything, Nick, you know, first off, thanks for coming on the show, bro. This is going to be, this is going to be fun. Um, but kind of let him know a little bit more about your background, man. Who you are. Yeah. So, um, Hush, uh, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And um, a little bit about my background, how I got to know Clutch, and just kind of where I'm from. I, I originally grew up in uh, West Hollywood, moved out, of, uh, moved out to Ventura County about 10 years ago, and um, have since kind of grown up in the Ventura County area. And um, Hutch used to be my coach on, uh, on a dance team called Heroes to Legends, and also I got to know him through Billy Clower, um, and since then just through Crunk. And um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I graduated from Foothill Tech in 2018, um, and uh, more of a personal background is after high school, um, I wasn't going into in too, in too great of a direction, and so, you know, like Coach said, um, I try to be inspirational, and I try to help people, and that's because out of, out of, out of high school, and really kind of before that, um, I, I was living in kind of a black hole in my life, that I felt like I was just kind of getting sucked in, and um, it's because, you know, I was just kind of by myself all the time, and the and, and thoughts can really um, influence your actions on, on a day to day basis. And uh, I obviously didn't have control over that because I didn't understand that. And so, kind of like my kind of like the most important couple of years of my life within the last maybe two or three, because that's kind of been the the time of overcoming of, of a lot of things and. Um, through business, through uh, better association, through, um, you know, just clarity, developing clarity in, in one's life is um, sort of what I've been going through. And uh, yeah, you know, I love engineering. I love teaching kids. I love um, helping the future and, and supporting the community. Lit, my dog. Um, yeah, well, kind of kind of even what we were talking about right now before we got started. Um, you know, there's always, like, dreams and visions of what we got. Like, people who are watching the show, this is my second live I've done, so I don't like doing the videos, but whatever. Um, you know, you got to build up, you know what I'm saying, and that's something that I kind of wanted to, you know, have when I was thinking about, like, damn, who else do I want to bring on the show? So I thought of you, man. And it's like, so what are some of the things that you're wanting to see built around here right now? Because I, I always notice, um, you know, shout out again to Byron Bucal, you know, um, he's been on the show, but uh, I, I noticed that you and him got like kind of tight around the, the fitness motivations and doing your guys' you know, all these different fitness challenges together. 
Um, so that's cool that we're seeing kind of being built around here in the 805 is a healthy lifestyle, you know, like a physically healthy lifestyle. So what are, what would, would you say would be something that you would want to see built from people? Yeah. Um, something that I would want to see built for people and from people is, is an understanding that, well, something that, that, that I believe the community lacks is, um, is, is support for, support for the youth. Um, in so many ways, you know, um, kids don't always grow up with with opportunities that uh, for that, that maybe some other kids in the opportunity in, in the community have. You know, a lot of kids grow up with different opportunities, and the one thing that I've had to learn um, is the most important thing is over physical health is uh, mental health. Um, your mental health will will determine your physical health. It will determine your, your daily health, and it will determine it will determine the future um, of of your life essentially. And uh, just finding um, maybe maybe so something that that fitness has helped me with is um, is it is that fitness is an amazing way to inspire people uh, through it is an amazing way to inspire people. And there's two ways you can inspire action. It's, it's, it's to either inspire or manipulate. And going the inspiring route, um, you just reach a lot more hearts um, everywhere. And um, fitness is really a great place to start because you start understanding what you're capable of. You start understanding um, how, to, how to push your limits and what that feels like and what that looks like. And so I like to call it like, like approaching life with a marathon mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, approaching life with a marathon mindset is understanding that 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 one day you're gonna finish that marathon, right? But on the journey, you're gonna you, you are gonna go you are gonna overcome so many things at different levels, you know, throughout your life. And I like to call those milestones, you know. So when you accomplish something big in your life, that that's a new milestone. And so um, something that I would like to see built into this community is is a is a place where people can go, or um, and uh, learn learn from people who, who have the results that they want. You know, um, create a safe environment to fail is, is really what I believe in because I, I believe that 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 our that our community and our society and our generation um, are around the Gen Zers, the millennials. We all have a huge fear of failure, huge fear of failure, and. Um, that's something that that personally kept me from growing was, uh, you know, coming from, from coming from being an extreme procrastinator, which I still am. But it comes from the idea of kind of um, not not wanting to do something because if I can't do it perfect, why do it at all? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. keep I'm gonna keep pushing on the back burner. So that was something for me, and just um, you know, to 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 have a place where um, people feel welcomed to have a place, kind of like what HTL did for me, mm -hmm. you know? HTL was a free team and, um, and, and it gave me a chance. It gave me multiple chances actually. And it gave me a safe place to fail. And uh, that impacted my life in many, many ways, including not just from dance, but from the fitness aspect, from the mental aspect, from teaching you discipline, from getting around people and staying out of trouble, kind of like that. You know, and just inviting everyone, and uh, no matter where your strength is, you know. So that's kind of the belief I have around it. How we could do it is, you know, running clubs, um, uh, may maybe gyms, may maybe free gyms, you know, um, non nonprofit gyms, uh, free classes for for the community, um, free dance teams, you know. And um, so how, how, how can we get to that point? Well, I believe that we can get to that point by maybe com uh, government funding, right? Um, people funding, um, ha having investors who, who, who believe in the same vision. And uh, I feel like that could be a great start. And, and, and it's not about it being perfect in the beginning. Because if the vision is strong enough, if the why is strong enough, the how and what will follow. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's that's something too um, that made me sad about like OPEC. And then there's like also the Columbia gym where 
you know, they're shutting these places down. And people like Anderson Pack had to come back and save OPEC. He helped save OPEC. Um, Byron did his part trying to save OPEC. Um, you know, a lot of this Curtis was going out there and dancing a lot, trying to bring awareness to it. Um, I remember they, they used to have George Lopez shows there. For people who run the 805 who don't know that, they used to have George Lopez uh, comedy shows up at OPEC. Um, so that's really tight, man. Yeah, to see, to have like a place for a, just like a safe place to learn type of thing, like safe place to be, learn, hone your skills, ask questions. Yeah. Um, fuck, dude. And, and how old are you now, man? I'm 19. Yeah, I'm 19 months. I was doing, I was doing some different shit, dude. Uh, I was doing some real different shit, that's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, that's that's kind of what wanted to lead me into the whole, like, you know, I think, because I watched you kind of go through your little downward spiral there for a little bit, you know? As a friend, you gotta let your friends just be with their things sometimes, you know? But, uh, you know, you got yourself in, into an entanglement of things. And, uh, you know, first the smoking section this season, pretty much all of 2020. I've tried to keep geared around like mental health, social health, emotional health, um, because you know, you know, yeah, you know, you know, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you know, um, and because we all go through it, even with the strongest of us, you know what I mean. So, for you, what was was there like a moment, or was there a day, or a conversation that you were just like, dude, I got, I got to fucking get this together. You know what I mean, like. For me, like, for me, like, you know, a lot of people know, like, I used to be, I used to be super into, like, popping pills and stuff, dude, right? And then I just remember, like, we were all partying one night, and, like, I, I decided not to do anything, and I was just, like, looking around at everybody, like, what the fuck is <laughs> going on? Like, you know, they look all goofy, and it's like, yeah. do I look like that? Like, oh, my God, my mother would be disappointed in me, like, oh, my goodness, and so... Yeah, that night I, I really, uh, I really stopped, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I've definitely done, I've had my fun still, you know, for sure. But I was never, like, consumed by, you know, God, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Or just, like, <clears throat> I was a thrill seeker type of person, you know what I mean? So that was my moment. Was there something like that for you that got you on this path now? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I was thinking about that not too long ago. Um, you know, what started all of this? <laughs> and, um, and it kind of comes from uh, being negatively motivated. So what I mean by that is, is understanding how bad things can get and being motivated not to go back there. Mm -hmm. And and that happened um, during one of the darkest points in my, in, in my life, maybe a couple years ago. Um, it had to do with some with, with some relationship issues and stuff like that. And, uh, and then I was so fortunate enough to have uh, someone interview me while I was, you know, I, I, I was still a pill popper. I was still, you know, doing, doing a whole bunch of things and uh, living, living a hopeless life, basically. Like, the direction I was going was not going to last long. And um, because, I, I didn't, because I lost hope, you know. And I believe lo losing hope is probably the worst thing that can happen to someone. But one day, um, I applied for this job to be a teacher. Because I, it was an act of desperation. It was an act of desperation. And um, I, I applied to maybe four or five jobs because I knew I needed to do something. And um, I, I remember when I applied for it too, I, I was crying. I was um, frustrated. I was scared. I was um, desperate. And uh, so I went on Indeed. I applied to a million things. And, um, and, and one guy came back to me and said, hey, uh, we would love to have you um, just come for an interview in Orange County. And I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I got my ass to Orange County. <laughs> you did ass? <laughs> I was like, back up. Like, oh. And I was like, I'm not going to tell them anything about me right now. I'm just going to put the best face I can. So I showed up to this teacher interview in a leather jacket, right, with my hair in a ponytail, with, you know, looking like a freaking greaser. <laughs> And, um, and, and, and they were like, okay, so why, why do you want to teach? And I was like, 
um, <laughs> I didn't have really a strong why. I was just kind of like, because I wanted to make an impact in the community. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was my why then. You know, it, it, it was small, but it was a, it was a small step in, in, into the right direction. So, um, you know, I shared from the heart and, and uh, just, they were like, okay, you know, come, come back for training next time. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I really started um, thinking about where, where, where this can go. You know, that one step in, in, in that direction led to led to the dreams becoming bigger and bigger and bigger right and so um that that's what happened to each step of the way um eventually landing myself into it into my own classroom <laughs> into my own classroom and uh, what, what, what i was teaching was um computer science so uh, computer coding at the time and um and which is something that i happened to uh be involved with in high school so in, in high school, physical technology high school, um, the, the only place where I felt safe was in, in, in this lab. It was called B-Tech Lab, Design Tech Lab. And uh, it, it, it was basically an, an environment with 3D printers, CNC machines, laser cutters, anything you can think of. And that was kind of like my only safe place um, during my entire high school career where I felt safe because I, it was an environment that was forgiving, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it didn't ask for perfection, it just asked to get better. And so I was fortunate enough in high school to have been able to develop some of those skills which were able to help me when, when I was going through this time and w which was able to expose me to new opportunities, right? And so when I started teaching, I remember the first day I was drenched in sweat. I did not, you know, <laughs> it was embarrassing. But then um, I just had to, I just had to persist because th this was an opportunity that I couldn't give up, you know. And it's like, it's like I didn't know why I shouldn't give up. I was just like, this, this is good. You're on a good path. This is good. You're on a good path. This is good. You're on a good path. And so over time of teaching, I was like, oh, my God. These kids are literally looking up to me in the classroom. Like, they're sitting in chairs. They're looking up to me. And I'm telling them stuff that they have to learn. And I'm still doing drugs, you know. Yeah. And, I, uh, and then it, it sort of hit me right around that time where I was like, man, what kind of dad do I want to be? You know, what, what, what kind of example do I want to set for my community, for, my, for, for the future of, 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 of this country and for the future of families, you know? Uh, these, these kids are all going to be dads and moms one day. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's just sort of, was a process of building that dream bigger and, and that vision bigger understanding and giving myself reasons why why I, I I should improve you know and it's funny because when you build reasons when you when you build enough reasons and that list just keeps getting bigger of reasons why you should uh, grow for example um, it will outweigh the negative and so over time uh, after just being involved with the kids, being around the kids, seeing them learn stuff, seeing them, you know, trust me. Mm -hmm. I didn't have people in my life who trusted me. I felt, you know, I felt totally alone. And so I felt a deep connection with these kids and, and, um, and always put my best foot forward um, when, when I was there. But then outside of that was, was you know, outside of the classroom, my life was, was still very messed up. And that was going to be improved over time, right? But it, but but it, that kind of that turning point was starting to teach kids, and um, you know, I, I want to give the guy that gave me a chance uh, to teach an enormous hug. You know, even to this day, um, I, I always say thank you. But he, he doesn't know my story, just because you know I don't want to go through that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, oh, the, I think that's overcoming. So that, that was kind of a turning point. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> I feel like, you know, because I've, I had to do like recovery classes, you know, and um, they always teach you that there's always a point, there's a point, there's a decision, there's a decision, like, you know, that, that you got to make to start, start boosting yourself in that right direction. Um, ch uh, change is hard, but the choice of change is easy, like, is what, is what my teacher had taught us, and I was like, you know, that's kind of that's kind of profound. Like, yeah, because change is a struggle. You have relapse or you 
you know, you get pissed off one day because you don't have too many drinks, whatever, you know, somebody's vice might be. Um, but wanting to change is, is the first step, and that's usually the easiest one because it doesn't require anything physical, you know. Um, that, that's dope, dude. Yeah, working with kids, working with kids will change your life, bro. Yeah. And how old were these kids again? Second through fifth grade. Second through fifth grade? Yeah. Oh, dude, the babies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Working with, working with the babies will change your life, man. Um, you know, that's what, that's what always kept me close to you guys um, with HTL. Like, I'll let you guys come by the house and stuff. You're a bunch of fucking 18, 17-year-olds, you know, 16-year-olds. <laughs> I'll come by the house to kick it. But it's like, dude, at least your guys are here with me on a Friday night instead of fucking somewhere else. Like, you know, um, yeah, you know, kids crash cars too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Kids fucking get arrested too. You know, shit. Come to the house and kick it, dude. I'll take you home. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, man. So now, what would you say is going to be like, I don't want to say like your motivators, but now what are some of the things that are that are really pushing you to kind of go up? Do you know what I mean? Like keep pushing you to to like, is it is it dreams, people, or, or both, or what is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it is dreams, it is people, it's, um, it's vision, yeah, you know, and um, values, actually. It was discovering what a value was, <laughs> not too long ago, as a matter of fact. Um, and so, my, my values, my dreams, my vision right now, is it is still in the growing process of becoming very, very big. But um, I have a list of about five things that I filter uh, throughout my day, which is number one being purpose, you know, living with a sense of purpose. That's what I value, you know. I value living with a sense of purpose because um, that's what drives everything, you know. Yeah. Having a strong why, having a strong belief, or for some people, number one is faith, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, Faith, you know, I believe is an incredibly powerful tool. So, and then n- n- number two from, from below that is, um, let's see, it's a family and relationships. So um, I, I do these things in order too. So family and relationships is something that I value deeply now, more so than I used to because, um, you know, uh, I didn't, I didn't really understand that before. I didn't really understand what it looked like to have a healthy relationship mm-hmm. with anybody. And so, and, and uh, my third value has to be uh, mental health. Mental health, physical health, and just overall health, right, right, right there in that category. Because, um, and, and then the reason why it's, it, it's uh, number three is because number four is impact. And how can I impact people without having a sense of purpose, without... Um, having good quality of relationships that I have myself, you know, how can I impact people without being an example, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, health, because you got to be healthy before you help people, which which is kind of like a, a, a funny thing that I hear a lot is a lot of people are like, I'm so selfless, um, and I would die for my family, right? But um, okay, that that's incredibly powerful. But um, what would it take for you to live for your family? You know, and um, and then after impact, it's financial freedom, right? And then legacy. I, I believe building a legacy <clears throat> for your own family and helping other families develop legacies for themselves it is an incredibly powerful thing that we all are capable of doing. You know, we are all capable of living with a sense of purpose. We're all capable of living with good quality relationships with future family or present family. Um, you know, we can all have better health. We can all live with making an impact, right? Making an impact is so important, you know? Your, your input is going to equal your output. And a lot of people think, you know, oh, uh, I need to pursue life on my own, you know? And I need to do it all myself. But, um, you know, but, but, but kind of the problem with that is that, um, Sometimes it, 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 will, it will take you in circles, you know, because the same thinking that got you to where you are isn't going to get you out of that situation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need new input from books, from podcasts, from uh, from mentors, from people in from people who have the fruits on the tree in the area of life that 
that you desire to be better in, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, you, you know, those are kind of my 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 values, my whys. Now, now, th th those are my values, but my whys are a little bit different. They're a little bit more detailed. So kind of like what I believe is challenging the status quo. You know, I believe that the status quo is um, is meant to be challenged. You know. I believe that there's more to life than living paycheck to paycheck. I believe that there's more to life um, than than being controlled like a puppet for our whole lives. You know, I believe that it's possible to have a great family relationship. I believe it's possible to have great friends. I believe that it is completely possible to overcome your own mind. And uh, a quote that I heard not too long ago is, um, "If you can overcome your mind." Um, you can take over a city, you know, because your your mind is is your biggest enemy, but it is also your biggest friend. And um, if you learn to control it, and um, and and you change the input of um, which inevitably means that you are a result of your daily habits, um, it will change your life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It it will. It definitely changes daily life you know where you, when you start thinking of the concept of like people who get into like deep meditations and um, you know or like for me dancing was always like a meditation you know like and a lot of us say it like oh it's an escape you know you know it's an escape from all my stress or all my family problems whatever and so it's like that's what that's well that's what you're doing when you're meditating you like you know what i mean you escape you control your mind you, you know, sometimes people think controlling the mind too well is, is not having bad thoughts or not having bad days, you know, and it's like, no, it's, it's about having bad days, but it's how you truly react internally, what makes it, you know, whether you, you're submitting control to your mind, saying, hey, you're going to run crazy a little bit, and I'm going to let you do your thing, but when I need you, I got you, like, you know, um, yeah, man, that's fucking tight, bro, and you're 19, bro. So, you know, it's, <laughs> so I've known you for about, I think for about four years now. Four or five years now. Yeah, four or five years now, dude. So it's been, it's been tight, man, being able to watch you grow up into the, into the young man that you're becoming. And, and it's definitely one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on because <clears throat> I think a lot of people get confused between what's Twitter inspired and then it's like, no, dude, I've been going through the shits. <laughs> like, I need to, like, and I got some profound shit that I've been thinking about. Um, so, so that's tight, man. Um, what, what books are you reading? Like, what are you, what are you digesting on a daily so some people might get the same type of inspirations that you're getting? Yeah, and um, like, I, like I said, input is, is equal to your output, and um, and you have to start small, you know. A lot of people think you, you, you have to go hard on the first day, mm -hmm. but but don't do that. <laughs> because you're gonna burn yourself out, yeah. you know? And 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 um, it, it's cool to challenge yourself once in a while and go hard once in a while, right? But um but anyway, what what I ingest on a daily basis is um, a, a, a lot of reading, a lot of communication and uh, and audios, right? stories of, of people who have overcome things in, in different in different perspectives and um so the books i read books that i highly recommend um first one being the compound effect <laughs> mm -hmm. the compound effect is an incredible book it's it, it literally goes into detail and gives you so many examples on on why you you you, you should strive to only get better one percent per day one percent per day mm -hmm. literally one but if, if you become better one percent every single day, you are golden, because the compound effect tells you, you know, you you guys have all been in, in, in math class, right? You guys all know the the exponential curve, or maybe the other way, you know, mm -hmm. um, y equals m x plus b, right? Um, <laughs> oh, no, my, fuck, my bad. That's <laughs> <in here. laughs> the exponential equation. Um, that's the compound effect. So in, in the beginning, when you are ingesting input, it, it kind of goes back to like the penny. You guys have all heard like doubling penny, yeah. right? That could be your life too. So, you know, uh, you, you start with one penny, 
and 15 days later, you have $160 because the penny has doubled itself to only $160. But what happens between day 15 and day 25 is now that penny has turned to, um, I think about $10 million, right? And the same thing happened w with your life. In the beginning, you go through this flat line, right? But you are in ingesting knowledge that, that you believe will help you, right? It's having, it's having faith. It's having belief that, that what it is you're doing um, will lead to better things. And um, that's kind of what the compound effect is about. Another book I highly recommend um, is How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's a great book. Yeah, by, by Dale Carnegie. And uh, that book opened my eyes. I was like, oh, I didn't know people could be nice to each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't know that, that there was more behind the conversation besides hello and goodbye. Right? Everything else in between is just kind of, mm. but um, that's an incredible book on how to, on, on, on how to um, learn from people. I think, I think it's a great eye opener on to what is possible with, with building relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and the quality of relationships you build um, can, 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 can be extremely beneficial if, if you know how, if you know how to navigate them, you know. And another book I recommend is How to Stop Worrying and Start, and start Living. Um, that, that, that's an important, that, that, that's an important subject, man. And um, because worry, fear is fake, I believe. Fear is fake. We are only born with two fears. Only born. Everything else is learned. And those two fears are the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Mm -hmm. Every other fear we have on a day-to-day -day basis has been learned. Now, when I learned that, I was like, you know, what am I, what am I afraid about? <laughs> it, 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 is it, am I worried about my anxiety? Am I worried about my depression? Am I worried about what? You know? And is it worth worrying about? You know? Is it, because if you worry, you will inevitably, you can die from worry. Yeah. Yes. You can worry yourself to death. You can <laughs> worry yourself to worry death, man. Yeah. And um, so I think that's an incredible book too. And the book that I'm currently reading is called Start With Why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And uh, I think that is an incredible book because it goes deep into the insight of how important it is to approach life with a why, how, then what mindset. Mm -hmm. When most people approach life with, what is it? How did you do it? But they never ask why. Mm -hmm. Right. And so people ask me a lot, why do I run? Or no, people ask me a lot, how did you do that, that challenge? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, bro, um, how I did it, is it, it, it I, I personally believe this isn't the right question. It's more why you did it. Why you did it, is it you know, it's your mind that's going to take you to the finish line, not your body. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I believe that's an incredible book to probably start with, is start with why. Because that is how you, um, and, and it, it goes into depth with how companies like Apple have been so successful, Southwest, and where they come from, and why they were built, Wright Brothers, you know, su success stories, and uh, why they happened and how they happened. And uh, it's all because of the power of why. Right? So I recommend those books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are the, like, those are some of like, the big ones, like, uh, the compound effect is definitely one. Um, how to make friends and influence people. That's a, anybody who I know who's been really successful has recommended that book, dude. You know, um, yeah, it's it's about you know. For me, like people, I think now have more, not only more access to books, but right now, especially during the pandemic, like we have more time for books. Um, which is cool and it's going to be that way for a while and so that's really it's really cool to be able to see a lot of people start reading again because you know if you don't follow the right people on social media that shit can be dead for your fucking brain yeah. <laughs> you know that's like a oh purgatory for the brain that's a bad perspective right there <laughs> yeah you know um yeah that's why and i mean dude that's why I, your twitter your twitter feed has been one of the best follows that i that i keep on there um, just because it's like, it's, it's consistent, like uplifting, consistent, like, 
you know, good self-talk. It's some stuff that I could sit there and read and be like, okay, this is something I can, I can tell myself all day long. And it's going to help me get through the day. Um, yeah, man, dude, it's impressive, bro. And, I, and I'm really thankful that I had the chance to be able to get you on the show. Um, everybody follow him on Twitter. Yeah, you guys can find him there. What's your Twitter handle? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Check it, man. Uh, Follow this, follow this guy on Twitter. He's, he's got the best, the fucking best tweets, um, especially if you like motivational, inspirational um, content. Um, yeah, dude. I appreciate that, brother. And my Twitter is kind of old, 2015. It's a Nick, N-I-C-K underscore B-P, 2015. <laughs> You see that? <laughs> we hold it down around here. We keep them. We keep them fucking handles rolling. Um, yeah, man. Thank you, bro. Hey, I, I, it means a lot. And uh, if, if if I can only give one last piece of advice, it would be to get around people who have what you want. You know, just get around better people. You are the quality. You will. You know, the quality of your life will determine on who you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. There you guys go. The smoking section. We'll be back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>